Stop. greater than just saying let's create a tent city or let's you know I mean those are all obviously b would benefit the individuals today but I don't think mm -hmm. in the long run it speaks to our children or our grandchildren or but you know what I'm thinking because it's it's a real criminal offense right now what every um, <coughs> every level of government is doing like I include you know our First Nations in that in this is that you know like, um, the solutions, you know, seem fairly simple, but, um, you know, nobody is willing to take the risk of investing um, just, you know, 5 or 10 percent of, you know, their new housing and that into, um, into housing. Nobody is willing to take the risk, especially from the corporate end, of, you know, just saying, you know, 5 or 10 percent of their money and that their profit going into community solutions. Um, to answer your question in that about, you know, the 10% for housing and that, you know, when you made that comment, it was like, right away my thoughts are, but 10% is a very realistic goal um, to achieve because um, when the ad hoc community came up with that, we could have said, you know, 20 or 30% and said, okay, yes, that's, you know, more realistic, but it wasn't realistic from the homeless end because what happens then is that if we had said, you know, we want 20 or 30 percent of the housing um, designated for affordable housing. That doesn't come through. That's another letdown. That's another letdown for the person who is at risk of becoming homeless. And that is a hundred percent, you know, um, letdown for the people who are currently homeless. So, you know, 10 percent, yeah, that was realistic because it's like, okay, well, 10 percent is not going to make a big dent on the people um, who would be living in a housing project, like, for instance, the wing building, I think, over just off of the Stormont Road, you know, and that's in receivership as far as I know, but, you know, like 10% of that was designated as affordable housing. Um, that would, you know, get, you know, 10 families off the streets. If we had every project at 10%, that would, you know, um, get our homeless uh, problem under control. Right now, it's going out of control um, because that gray area is closing. And so it's like, okay, well, um, when I was talking to some people that work in the emergency shelters, they were saying about 20% of their population is the working poor. The people who have jobs who um, aren't on income assistance. And what are they getting from society? You know, we're paying taxes. We're paying into everybody's taxes and we're getting nothing back. We're not getting our basic needs met. Um, but yet, you know, we're still plugging away at it. Um, we're still, you know, contributing to society through our work, through our coming out to meetings like this. We're still contributing um, in multiple ways. So 10%, you know, if we were to grab that 10% and put those people in, um, in that, that housing, I would look at it from this point, if, because, you know, I look at it from a sales point of view, that, you know, real estate people need to look at this like, saying, okay, well, if we don't give them 10%, that's, you know, that's one more family dead on the streets. That's one more person dead on the streets, literally dead here in Victoria. Um, but we could look at it from the other way, is that if we had 10%, that's one less family that's out on the street, that's one less family that's using the food banks, that's using our social service, uh, service uh, system, that's one more child who has a better chance of surviving and becoming a productive member um, in our community. That's the sales point that I would use to the real estate people to point it out in that avenue. But currently, um, right now, just through one agency, through the open door, there was 80 people who died last year. What did they die of? You know, malnourishment. 
um, being exposed in, in um, um, the elements that you know, aren't so friendly, um, from the weather elements, and then our society, our society in itself is not friendly. I don't disagree with anything you said. I don't, I don't, don't uh, uh, our society, uh, there, there is uh, no solution because those um, facts are those like those facts from a nursing all, from a nursing really perspective. I mean, being uh, if I put my other hat on and that's a street outreach nurse. I mean, it is it is it is factual that that it costs less to house and feed and care for individuals than it does to allow them to be homeless and and, and the the consequences of that on their health and you know their their long term viability and. But that, that's the, the back to the, the general question that we've asked, is, is it solvable? Because I don't, I mean, those, those facts are known. They're known from everybody, from the Prime Minister all the way down to the, to the frontline service providers, to those without homes, to, I mean, it's known. So then what? Okay. I see no national disaster happening. It's holding out we, right we, in front of us right now. We, we, we both we, agree with you yeah. that that's true. But... Uh, and it's well known. Everybody, it's written about about in the papers. Uh, it's it's understood, and um, so who benefits?